Blessed be, guys and ghouls. My sister-in-law sprung for a new light, so hopefully things are looking a little bit better than they were in the last video. Anyhow, um, I wanted to take this opportunity to do another DIY video for you guys. It's been a while since the last one. So this video is inspired by a previous DIY done by Orphea333. I'm going to leave a link to her video down below. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take this and turn it into this. Today we're going to be making DIY faux taxidermy picture frames. These are really cool. You can put them just about anywhere. You can put them in your bedroom, a kid's room, depending on the color scheme you go for, anything you want. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first, I'm heading over to my local thrift store in search of picture frames. Right away, I found these two small ones. However, if you're planning on doing this project yourself, I recommend that you stick with wooden picture frames, just like this third picture frame that I found for a really great deal. Once we get the picture frames home, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to spray paint them. Now, obviously I'm pregnant and spray paint fumes can be pretty toxic. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap on my handy dandy vapor mask. If you wanna pick one of these up, I got mine off of Amazon and it was pretty inexpensive. Just make sure that you find one that is graded for use with vapors and not just particles. I went ahead and grabbed my absolute favorite spray paint. This is the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch spray paint in flat black. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab those picture frames that we just bought and pop out the backing, any stock images it may have, and the glass. Next, I'm gonna give my spray paint a good shake, give it a couple quick sprays just to clear out the nozzle, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint a nice, even, light coat all over the front of my picture frame. Once the smaller frames have had plenty of time to dry, I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process with the large wooden frame. Now you may notice my personal spray painting technique is to go ahead and hit one side of the object with a zigzag motion and then I move to the other side of the table and repeat that until I have hit all four sides evenly. This really helps me to get into every nook and cranny of whatever I'm painting. Everything has had plenty of time to dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the top coat of spray paint. Again, this is my go-to Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch spray paint in clear gloss. Now, as you can see, I removed the wooden picture frame and I'm laying down a couple of recycled bottle caps to rest the picture frame on top of. The reason I'm doing that is to keep the surface area touching the table to a minimum since spray paint can remain tacky up to days after it's been painted and I really don't want to damage the paint job that I just put on the picture frame. Since the wooden frame is painted on both sides, I want to be extra careful. I'm gonna repeat this process on the two smaller picture frames, skipping the bottle caps this time since I did not paint these on the back side. Now that our frames have had plenty of time to dry, I'm gonna bring them back inside and with my trusty stash of fake plastic bugs, I'm gonna lay them out inside of the frame to kind of visualize what composition I would like the fake bugs to have, just to sort of plan things out as much in advance as we can. We're gonna go ahead and take our bugs outside to spray paint. Once again, I'm using my trusty old Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch spray paint. This time, I'm opting for flat white. Now you can paint your bugs or anything in this project any color you want. Some great ideas would be, of course, black, but you could also do bright blue or red or gold. I love painting plastic critters flat white just because it makes everything look almost like porcelain, like it's been calcified, and I really, really like the aesthetic. 
Now, obviously, these critters have a lot more nooks and crannies in it than our picture frames did, which means I'm hitting them a little harder with the spray paint just to make sure that every little ridge gets filled in. Once these have had time to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over and spray paint them on the underside. It's up to you. You could also hand paint these bugs with, say, acrylic paint and hope for the best. But for me personally, I love spray paint so much I was determined to make it work. We are back inside and I'm laying out all the materials I need to create the new backing for my picture frames. Now I briefly entertained the idea of using my black sketch paper for this, but then I saw that I had this old packaging from some bath products and I instantly knew that I had to use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lay out the backing of my picture frames against this piece of copper paper and trace each frame out before cutting them to fit. One thing I found that helped me is if I actually laid them into the picture frames themselves because every time I found that I needed to cut the paper down a little bit to make sure that it fit properly, just keep in mind that you can always cut off more but you can't add more to your paper so cut wisely. Once that's all done, I'm going to go ahead and use my industrial strength glue to go ahead and glue the copper paper onto the back of the picture frame backing and attach the paper to it. And then I'll use a damp paper towel to wipe off the paper since they got a lot of smudges on them just from being mishandled over time. Then I'm going to sandwich the picture frame backs between some heavy books to make sure that the copper paper adheres nice and flatly to the picture frame backing. Now that everything has had plenty of time to dry, we're going to go ahead and move this little project into the living room where we're going to have a nice firm surface to work on. Then we're going to go ahead and arrange our spray painted bugs into the frame until we get a configuration that we like. After we do that, I'm going to go ahead and remove the frame and use my industrial strength glue to glue on the centipede, placing it exactly where I had decided to put it beforehand. Once I had glued down the centipede, I realized that it would be a lot easier to gauge where all of my insects should go with the frame on. So I went ahead and popped it back onto the frame and continued to glue down bugs. Alrighty, this is voiceover Madeline speaking, and I just wanted to point out that this exact moment is when I am making a terrible, terrible mistake. As you may have noticed, this spray painted tarantula has really wonky legs, and I thought I could use glue to try and put it back into place, but as you will quickly see, that turns out to be a terrible idea. Learn from my mistake. It's perfectly fine to glue down the bodies, but when it comes to the wonky legs, using my E6000 glue is not the way to go. As I'm sure you've noticed, the legs on this tarantula are pretty wonky, so I'm gonna go ahead and dab a little bit of glue onto each leg to see if there's any way I can get them to stick in place so that they can be in a somewhat more reasonable angle. Okay, so not only does this not work, but I succeeded in smearing glue all over the copper frame. No worries, I'm going to go ahead and grab some straight pins from my sewing basket and attempt to use them to kind of pin the legs into place while the glue dries. Then I'll figure out how to clean up the glue. First, I'm trying to clean up the glue with some Q-tips I have. With not a lot of success, it's mostly just smearing the glue around. I'm gonna run onto Google real quick and figure out what substance I can use. Alrighty, Google has spoken. Apparently, the best thing to clean up this particular kind of adhesive is acetone. 
Now I don't actually keep acetone on hand, but I do have non-acetone nail polish remover, which for most circumstances works about the same. The only difference is that sometimes with non-acetone nail polish remover, you are required to do a little extra elbow grease than you would if you had just straight acetone, but I'm cool with that. So not only is the nail polish remover not working to pull up the glue, I've discovered that once the glue dries, it's actually relatively easy for me to just scratch it up. However, one result of the non-acetone nail polish remover that I should have anticipated had I done a test swatch is that the nail polish remover is actually removing the copper tint from the backing, turning it into just a silver backing. But you know what? Maybe this is a happy accident. Maybe this backing will look really cool if it's silver. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a Bob Ross mentality and try to turn this into a happy accident. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit this entire backing with nail polish remover, getting into all the little nooks and crannies with my Q-tip to turn this copper backing into a cool uniform silver backing. As I was getting into all the little nooks and crannies with the Q-tips, I noticed that this glue on this paper was just not a good enough hold. The bugs in general were sliding around a little bit. They weren't staying in place really well, especially the spiders on the left-hand side that were just barely touching the paper to begin with. So what I did was I kind of skipped ahead. This was a step I was planning on doing once the glue had dried anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with some finishing nails and hammer those through the bugs, securing them in place really solidly. It kind of reminds me of the actual insect taxidermy, how a lot of those are pinned into place using straight pins, except I wanted mine to be a little bit more punk rock, so I'm using finishing nails instead, making it look a lot more brutal and homemade, and I'm really happy with how it looks. Now, when you are hammering in the finishing nails, it's okay if they poke out of the back of your backing a little bit, but try not to hammer into the surface underneath it. I was really careful in this way because I didn't want to wreck my tabletop. I would encourage you to do the same just because I imagine it would be really hard to remove if you accidentally pinned it to whatever surface you're working on. However, the plus side to using these nails is you can actually use them as additional hooks to hang items off of. For me personally, I think they would be really great for holding things like rings or even hooked earrings. Alrighty, so this plan was going really, really well until I've noticed one part around the centipede's leg that required a little extra elbow grease. I actually ended up rubbing through the silver backing, bringing up all of the pigment entirely, exposing the white paper underneath. Ultimately making this backing, as the metallic paper stands, unsalvageable. So I went ahead and pried up all of the bugs that I had been working on. Um, when possible, I went ahead and kept the nails in the bugs. The reason being that the, because of the rubbery plastic nature of these insects, it could be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get the nails back through the exact holes that I had nailed them in before. Once the bugs are pried up with the non-acetone nail polish remover, seeing as how at this point I'm not even trying to save the paper, I'm just trying to remove as much glue as possible so that my surface is as smooth as possible. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use my go-to 100% foolproof way to fix any mistake. When all else fails, paint it black. While the black paint is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and start up on the smaller picture frames, learning from my previous mistakes. I'm gonna remove the frame from the backing and put my tarantula exactly in the middle. This one, the legs were a little less wonky, so I figured worst case scenario, it looks like it's about to crawl off the edge of the picture frame a little bit. And this guy, I'm actually skipping the glue entirely and just nailing it directly onto the frame. In the future, I would use a faster setting glue like crazy glue or regular super glue. For this next step, you're gonna need cup hooks. I went ahead and painted these ones white and I painted the ones for the smaller frames black. 
you're going to need a silver sharpie i use silver because it shows up really clearly against the black paint for obvious reasons if you were to use a black sharpie you wouldn't really see where you're marking you're going to also need a ruler and a cordless drill with a bit that matches the size of the screws in your cup hooks and because i'm really bad at math i'm also going to be using a cell phone as a calculator I'm going to go ahead and measure the bottom of my frame and divide that measurement by four. That will allow me to mark three places along the bottom of the frame. I'm going to go ahead and mark those three points with my silver sharpie. Then I'm going to go ahead and use my drill to drill through the places that I had indicated. This will allow the cup hooks to screw in really easily without risking the wood getting cracked in the process. Finally, I'm gonna go ahead and screw in my screw hooks. Um, there's a point where they were a little difficult to screw in by hand, so if necessary, you can use pliers to assist you. Just keep in mind, if you do that, you risk damaging the cup hooks a little bit. I chipped the paint when I did it with mine, but I actually really liked how it looked. It looked really cool and distressed. Now that the backing of the frame has totally dried, I'm gonna go ahead and reapply all of my insects. I'm gonna go ahead and use the hammer and nails to attach the bugs to the frame like I should have done in the first place. And then I'm gonna use my super glue to fix the spider's legs so that they aren't so wonky. Now there are a few places where the white paint on the insects got damaged, so I'm going to go in with a super fine paintbrush and touch up the white paint with white acrylic paint. Now that the big frame is done, I'm going to continue to do the same process of adding cup hooks to the bottom of the smaller frames. Now because these frames are smaller, I'm going to go ahead and divide them into thirds because I'll only be using two cup hooks per frame. Also, because these frames are plastic, I had to get a little bit creative um, because, because the screws don't necessarily screw into the plastic, they screw through the plastic because the plastic is thinner. So I ended up having to cut the back of the cup hooks so that they wouldn't poke through the other side. These made them a lot shorter but it allowed them to go through the plastic without touching the backing and making everything kind of off kilter. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you guys really enjoyed these. I know I did. I'm looking forward to putting these smaller ones up in my room to help organize my jewelry. As for this bad boy, I'm not so sure. I'm thinking maybe I'll give them away to some lucky subscriber. So please just leave a comment down below as to what kind of faux taxidermy you would be interested in trying. And I'll go ahead and pick one lucky subscriber and send them this beauty. Alrighty, stay spooky.